This can't be right. Let me see that map. The road isn't even marked. No, oh, that's the Irish of it. Well, as long as we stick to the seacoast, we can't miss Shannon. Oh, it's your hurry, not mine. Now, look, Fitz, take it easy. You won't be much use to Walker if you break your neck. Well, it's my neck. Hey, I'm fond of mine, too. This will hold us all right. You stay here with the car in case someone comes along. I'll scout up the road a bit. Must lead somewhere. Don't be too sure. Irish paths are whimsical, like the Irish character. direct me to the nearest town. Oh. Oh, then you didn't come here looking for me. For you? <laughs> of course not. I'm looking for a town where I can hire a car. Indeed. What might your name be? Eh? Your name. It's Gerald. It's Gerald. Maybe if I knew why you were needing a car. Look, if you don't mind, I'm in a terrible hurry. Hurry. <laughs> Strange word, hurry. Why would you be in a hurry? There's a very important man waiting for me in New York, and he's not the kind that you keep waiting. What? Mm -hmm. There's another one of your words. It's plain to see that you're impatient with me, Fitzgerald. I've enjoyed our conversation. I'll not detain you any longer. Thank you very much. Then you'll not be wanting the direction. Oh, yes, that's right. The water from the mountains comes into my pool with a roar. Goes out with a whisper. Down the hill it goes, till it quietly reaches the sea. Near a little village called Balinabu. You, sir, me do the same. I'll go get my friend. Thank you very much. You're entirely welcome. Good day to you, sir. Oh, good day. Is there a...
This will be yours, sir. Thanks. And this over here, sir. This will be yours. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perhaps the landlady will know some way out of here. I'm beginning to think the whole thing's a conspiracy. Never should have listened to that old lunatic up by the waterfall. What waterfall is that, sir? The one up the stream a mile or so. The gentle burden it's called. There's no waterfall on it. I suppose we wet our feet in the mirage, huh? Begging your pardon, sir, but I've tramped the length of that burden many and many's the time when I a young lad. And there's no waterfall on it. I guess that old fellow must be a friend of yours. What old fellow? The old shoemaker with the green coat and the brass buttons. Shoemaker with the green Is everybody balmy in this country? You saw that waterfall, didn't you? No, you told me it was up there. Oh, yes, that's right. We hit the stream below it. Wonder what's wrong with our friend. Oh, he probably thinks you saw a pixie. They're quite common in Ireland. Yeah, well, I'll be glad to get back to New York where things make sense. It's because people like your new boss have taken all the agreeable nonsense out of life. I'm beginning to think you don't like Mr. Auger. I don't. I don't like his type. I don't like him personally. And above all, I don't like what he does to good newspaper men who go to work for him. I'm going to take a bath. Sure. In a fine tub. But for they forgot to put in the water pipes. And there's not a plumber the side of Limerick Town. Uh, don't think it's so hard. I like the Irish. Yes, well, you can have them. All of them, including myself. I wish I could still have your fits. But I just haven't got the price to compete with Auger. Come in. I've lost you some towels. Thank you. Just put them right here on the bed. Right. What time is dinner? In an hour or so. If Miss Dobe doesn't take it into its head to start an argument. Well, it will if it's like everything else here. You mustn't be too hard on us. We're not used to having such grand guests all the way from America. Oh, well, uh, would you tell the old lady I'd like to see her, please? There's only one old lady here. You're seeing her now. I beg your pardon. Are, are you the... Mrs. Uh, is there a chance of transportation out of here? If you can wait. Well, I can't. Well, you see, the trouble is we're sea locked. There must be boats. Four corns and such. But they're not much good in any kind of a sea, or if the wind's wrong. But sure, Sean O'Fair will be glad to take you in his boat when he comes in. Mm -hmm. And when is that likely to be? Well, he'll be back any day now. Any day? Tomorrow, perhaps. By the end of the week, surely. I hope you'll be comfortable, sir. Oh, that was a good stew, Fitz. It's all right. If you like clam stew. I do. Well, why don't you pour one for yourself? Oh, no. Tessette wouldn't like it. She says a long glass means a short life. Oh, that's a lot of bunk, isn't it? Why, when I was a cub reporter back in Tennessee, I once interviewed a man on his 110th birthday. He swore it was the result of drinking a pint of corn liquor every morning before breakfast. You tell me that. That's now. the truth. You know, you'd do me a great favor if you'd mention that to herself sometime. Well, I'd be delighted any time. A hundred and ten years. One hundred and ten. Hey, take a glass of whiskey with you, as you insist. And there's your guests of the house. Well, sit down. We want to uh, ask you something. It's about this waterfall and the old man Mr. Fitzgerald had words with. There's no waterfall on the gentle burden. And it was no mortal man himself had words with. Mm -hmm. Who was it then? Oh, I mind well who it was. Oh, well, who? Don't keep it to yourself, man. It was him. The leprechaun of the gentle burden. Oh, no, no. come now. You don't believe in those old superstitions. I believe what my father knew, and his father before him. It was a great opportunity you had, and the saints forgive you for not taking advantage of it. A hundred and ten years of age, you say. Well, what should I have done? Seized him. I'd made him give you the pot of gold. What else? I wish I'd thought of that. Has anyone else ever done that around here? 
Mrs. Daly's own father, Mr. William, and lived to curse the day. Oh, why should he curse the day? He forgot to spit on the gold. A handful of pebbles was all he had for his trouble, and bad luck for the rest of his life. Well, that's the rule, is it? You have to spit on the gold. So any little babby could tell you that. You'd better be careful who you talk to, Fitz. Oh, he'd best have that when you hear the end of it. I was here one night. Miss Nora was away at school. I was alone with Mr. William, and he here with a drink raging in him. And he started to curse every leprechaun that ever cobbled a shoe. And he took the bottle, and he threw it into the fireplace. And he stood up, swaying on his two feet. Katie, he says, I'll have it out with them devils if it's the last thing I do. And with that, out through the door. Before I could raise a hand to stop him. I heard the name gentleman, Mr. Sir. Come on, come on, man. What's the rest of it? Well, uh, well, I stood at the door. Call him, and then, then, I heard the banshee. It was the first time I heard it. But I knew it was all over, and so it was. The next morning, they found him with the gentle burden, and he struck dead altogether, the way that he ne the way that he never moved again. Well, gentlemen, as I was saying, drink is the curse of the human race. Oh, well, you're not it. Well, I think it's past me bedtime, gentlemen, so I'll say good night, kids. For an hour. Katie? I'm ready for you, whoever you are. Come on, I have it. Fitzgerald. Oh, Mr. Fitz. You give me a start, sir. What are you doing with that bottle of whiskey? Shh, shh, shh. Themselves have sharp ears. And they might have heard us taking their names. You know, it's a good thing to leave a little something on the doorstep. But I always thought the traditional thing for leprechauns was a glass of milk. Milk? Good night. Mr. Fitzgerald. Good night, Katie.
Let me go, you bastard. Do not, I'll pot your bones with fever. Oh, no, you don't. I've got Take it. Take your hands off. Not until you showed me your pot of gold. I... What would a poor, simple old man like me be doing with the pot of gold? None of that now. I'm ready for your lies. Of course you got a pot of gold. No right-minded leprechaun would be caught without one. <laughs> We've been telling you such stories. Uh, your friend, Tady. Tady! Who put you up to this trick? Ah, the biggest lawyer in all County Clare. That be true. But we're going to play this game according to the rules. Come on, now. Where's the gold? The gold. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, not so fast, my friend. Let me go, you armadar. Come on, the gold. Where is it? But they're telling me I have no gold. Where is it? I mean business. Where is it? Yes, where is it? Why don't you take a little look at the waterfall yonder? Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. Uh, I've been warned of your tricks. Where is it? I don't, I don't know. Where is it? I don't know. <laughs> oh, isn't that the thorn bush? Right under your very nose. That's right, it's always buried, isn't it? <laughs> dig. Yeah. Come on, come on, dig. Yeah. Come on, hurry up, man. It is a cruel, wicked thing you're making me do. Well, you certainly do it up brown. Props and everything. Be. They're real. Real, Miss Dean. They're a lifetime savings. Several lifetimes, as you reckon these. They are real. I don't know who you are or what sort of a game you're trying to play. Did you steal these? I never stole anything in my life, except what is rightly mine. Well, that's one thing we have in common. Here. Take this back. But I don't understand you, sir. Now, you didn't really think I'd steal your savings. Or whatever they are. Here. You wouldn't be playing tricks on a poor old man, would you? <laughs> no. I'll leave the tricks to you. Take it back. Bury it again. Go on, bury it now. He give it back to me. He give it back. Tell this general, I'll never forget you for this. You earn my undying, my undying gratitude. Kip, take this little bit of a tipsy to remind you of our meeting. No, no, I... Take it. Thank you. No thanks for that, Sir It is I that am thanking you from the bottom of my heart. All the luck in the world to you. Mr. Stephen Fitzgerald, you have a way of twisting things in the most perplexing manner. It is I that am saying all the luck in the world to you. So, sir, good boy. And good luck to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fitzgerald. Good morning. 
I couldn't sleep very well. Oh, I hope it wasn't the bed. No, no, I think I just had one drink too many last night. I kept having dreams. Good ones, I hope. Strange ones, anyway. Perhaps it was Tatey's wild stories. It might have been the old man who gave me the advice up by the waterfall. What waterfall is that? The one up the brook there, the gentle burn, it's called, isn't it? But there's no waterfall on the gentle burn. Come on. But of course, Mr. Fitzgerald. We're going to find out once and for all if there's no waterfall up there. Now listen. Sure, it was here. Hey! hey! Who are you calling? Well, he's a, a rather peculiar friend of mine. He, but you must know him. He's about the... Uh, uh, but well, it's... It's easy to imagine things here in the woods. But I couldn't have imagined that waterfall. I saw it and I heard it. But maybe it... Maybe it is further upstream. Yes, that... That, that must be it. I suppose I could have forgotten about it. Yes. I used to come birds nesting here when I was a little girl. There's a grand view of the sea. very important to you? Oh, it's the chance I've been waiting for. Ever since the war, I've been kicking around Europe writing freelance stuff, mostly for Bill Clark. Now I'm ready to settle down to a real job. Oh, but you shouldn't give up your writing now. Oh, I don't intend to. The only difference is that from now on I'm going to be paid for it. I'm sick and tired of beating my brains out for nickels and dimes. It'll come. You mustn't fret, Mr. Fitzgerald. My friends call me Fitz. Fitz? Hmm? I'd never call you that. It, it, it sounds like a bottle of soda water. Well, a few... My mother called me Stephen. Stephen. Oh, I like that better. Everyone calls me Nora. Nora? Oh, that's very nice. That's always been a favorite of mine. Nora. If I ever had a daughter, that's what I'd call her. Nora Fitzgerald. Nora Fitzgerald. You're not married, Stephen? No, I'm too fond of my freedom for that. Oh, don't say that. A man should marry. It's the natural rule and a good thing altogether. Well, what about you? Doesn't that same rule apply to you? And who would I be marrying here in Ballinaboy? Michael the Fishmonger? Or Teddy Bird? <laughs> oh, look. It's a boat. It's the Araner, Sean Strawler. Your wish has come true, Stephen. If you start at once, he can have you and Shannon in the morning. What's wrong? You ever seen anything like this? Oh, sure. It's a doubloon. 16th century Spanish, I think. How could I have gotten it? Very easily. There have been many of them in Ireland since the Armada was wrecked here. But the farmers bring them in from time to time. That's a nice one. We better be on our way. Well, keep in touch with me, fellow. I'll let you know if I can salvage the car. Fine. Look me up if you ever get to New York. Well, not me. I'm the poor but honest type. Uh, good luck, Fitz. Bye. Goodbye, Nora. Now that I'm going, I half want to stay. You mustn't be looking backwards, Stephen. Look forward to what you want from me.
sorry he's gone? He's a wonderful man, Mr. Clark. It all depends on what you call wonderful. He's a nice fellow, he has brains, he's a first-class writer, but oh, he's willing to throw it all away for money. To subordinate himself to an egomaniac, to become just another bright young man who's made good... And you call yourself his friend, saying things like that about him the minute his back is turned. He said the same things to his face. He knows what's best for himself. Don't waste your fine Irish temper, my dear. It isn't worth it. Keep the so-and-so waiting ten minutes and then show him in. Yeah. No. Tell him I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Mr. Fitzgerald, please. Please, Mr. Fitzgerald. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. Mr. Auger, Mr. Fitzgerald won't wait. He's on his way out. Ah, uh, let us come in. Please come in, Mr. Fitzgerald. Hey, you see? <laughs> you, you kept me waiting for 48 hours. Gosh, it's good to see you. See you. Come in, make yourself at home. You know each other? Yeah, hello, Higginbottom. Higginbotham. Say, you've had the place done over, haven't you? Yes, my daughter's idea. Cost a fortune. Sit down. I want to talk to you. I haven't seen you in years. You know, I, uh, didn't you have something to do this afternoon? Oh, uh, yes. I'll uh, do it. He's invaluable, absolutely invaluable, and he drives me nuts. Don't disturb us. <clears throat> now, why do you think I sent for you? I'm not very good at guessing games. Hold on to your chair. Fitz, I'm going to run for the Senate. What for? I thought Senator Ransom owed his election to you. Oh, Ransom's all right, but it's not the same as holding the reins yourself. Fitz, there comes a time when a man reaches the top of the ladder in his chosen field. There's nowhere else to go. Well, I've reached that point. Other men go in for breeding thoroughbreds, collecting paintings. They're just toys. Say, so you know the oldest and the noblest occupation of them all. I think so. I mean politics. Well, you'll admit there's certain points of similarity. Oh, don't be cynical. Politics in a democracy. Well, where do I come in? You're going to put me in the Senate. Oh, no. I'm no politician. Exactly. Yeah, I read every one of your articles in the American Spectator. Not that I agree with your conclusions or the rabble-rousing policy of the paper, but one thing stands out. You know people. You understand the issues. Take this piece you wrote about my Paris speech. Called it boneheaded. Dunderheaded. Dunderheaded. Yeah, well, what? What difference does it make? Point is, you were right. You put your finger on the weakness of my argument. I could have put my foot in it. <laughs> well, that's exactly why I want you on my side. Well, of course, I was 99% right. Have some of this? Nothing. Well, here's my proposition. Come in with me. Write my speeches. Be my right hand. Be my brain, my conscience. Frankly, I want the money. But there's one thing we ought to clear up first. You may not like what I write. We may disagree. But of course we'll disagree. I hate people who agree with me. Is it a deal? It's a sale. Good. <laughs> we'll show them who's a dunderheader. That's <laughs> what I'm afraid of. All those school of journalism boys. Oh, how's Francis? Francis? Francis. Oh, she wants you to call her. I'm glad oh. you reminded me. Probably should have done it soon. You don't mind if I use one? No, of that's not a private line. That one of it. What's my home number? Rhinelander 45813. Rhinelander 45813. Uh, never mind that. Bring in Mr. Fitzgerald's keys and his address. Yes, sir. Uh, hello? Miss Auger, please. 
Mr. Fitzgerald. I don't have any address. I got you an apartment. You know how hard it is to find a place, even for me? Hello, Francis? Fitz. Yeah, about an hour ago. I I'm with him now. <laughs> no, the devil himself doesn't have enough money to buy it. Uh, what? Dinner tonight? Fine, I'd love to if, if I don't have to work too late at the office. You don't start till tomorrow morning. <laughs> All right, I'll tell him. Fine, I'll pick you up. Good. Okay. Bye-bye. She says I can't work too late. Uh, takes after her mother. Ah, here are your keys. Here's the address, Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you. And find out where Mrs. Auger hires servants and get him one. Yes, sir. It's the Acme agent. What, what do you do with a servant? I never had a servant before in my life. Well, I can't have you bothered with trifles. Got to keep that brain of yours on ice. We're going to do big things together, my boy. Yes. Big things. Cream? Mm-hmm. What was her name? Whose name? Your reason for being two days late? Oh. <laughs> Nora. Pretty, I suppose. If you like the Irish. I always have. I'm glad you're back, Fitz. And I'm glad you're going to be sensible. Aren't you both? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. It's a shame to waste your talent on the kind of writing you've been doing. Well, some people didn't think it was entirely wasted. Oh, but it was, as far as you yourself were concerned. Maybe you're right at that. I only started being sensible today, and already I have a, a big salary and an apartment. See? Yeah, I see. I've missed you, Fitz. I've missed you, too. You're a liar. You never even gave me a thought all the time you were away. I'm surprised you even called me. Well, I was only trying to be sensible. After all, the boss's daughter. Is that the only reason? How can you be after asking a question like that? And yourself as pretty as a bay filly in a field of clover? <laughs> Fitz, after only five days in Ireland, that's rank affectation. <laughs> Hello, Fitz. Well, Francis. well, look who's here. Mary's little lamb. How are you, Higginbottom? Uh, Higginbotham. I just rode up town with D.C. Uh, he'd like to get your thinking on the Labor Management Act. Now, my idea of the, of the proper kind of statement is this. Oh, I'm really dear, quite sure dear, that we'll Fitz, get the look, business through. We'll never make it. We're a half an hour late for the curtain already. Hurry, have you paid the check? No, I haven't. Just sign Bob's name, will you please, no, Charlie? I'll go ahead. Take it out of this, will you, Higginbottom? Higginbotham. Oh, yes. We were a little rude, weren't we? Yes, we were, but I want Father and all his stooges to understand that their jurisdiction does not extend beyond office hours. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, you needn't smile quite so cordially when you tip hat check girls. Gives them ideas. Well, she gave me a couple. Oh. Taxi, sir? Yes, please. Well, where are we going? Home. Oh, but it's so early. Listen, I got no sleep on that plane. It's me for that modernistic little nightmare that your father picked out for me. Just what do you mean, nightmare? Oh, wait till you see it. And I'll tell you, there was a painting over the fireplace. Uh, you don't mean to tell me that you had something... Yes, to... darling, I do, but that's all right. Don't apologize. It's nothing to me that I slaved for three whole days to make a nice place for you. I... What did you do with the painting? It's in the bathtub. The bathtub. Mm -hmm. What else? Well, I, I just rearranged a few things. Oh. There was a table by the fire that I moved around on the other side. And then there was a lady and gentleman yes, standing well, we'll on the mantel. we'll just go right up the there and re rearrange them back again. The table and chair and the lady no, and gentleman. No, I don't think you need to do that. Place, really, you don't. And oh, I'm quite yes, tired. I... Really? You heard her, brother. Yes, sir, I heard her. A little more to the right. That's right. Now, there. Oh. There. That's fine. Now, really, Fitz, don't you like it? Oh, it's absolutely breathtaking. What's it supposed to be? It's called Germinal 1948. Mm. It's the coal strike. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I thought it was Venus rising from the waves. Oh, Fitz is by a very promising young artist. I'm arranging a show for him. You're a busy little thing, aren't you? Just what do you mean by that? Oh, arranging shows, decorating apartments, convincing your father that he needed a ghostwriter. I didn't say I had a thing to do with that. No, I know. But I suspected it as soon as I got his cable. So what are you going to do, resign? No. No, I'm going to do the job that I was hired to do. But I would like to know what it's going to cost me. Not a thing, darling. It was sheer altruism on my part. 
Altruism. All of a sudden, you're an altruist. Well, don't you think that I... I think that I need a drink. Shall I tell you why I hate you? No, I... Because all the time you were away, you kept coming between me and whatever I was doing. Because I saw your face in crowds, in the street, in my mirror, when I was alone in my room. Because I ate, dreamt, slept, lived you. You and your black magic. I hate every inch of you. I hate your superiority, your black Irish eyes, and your arrogant nose. What was that? Oh, it must be the door. Oh, yes? I'm from the Acme Employment Agency, sir. Oh, there. Yeah. Okay, come in, come in. Yes, sir. Kitchen's right in there, if you don't uh, mind waiting for a minute or so. Fine time of night to be sending people over. Well, did you say you wanted him tonight? No, it must have been your father's second. Oh, well, that explains the well-known auger efficiency. Fitz. What is it? Fitz. Haven't I seen you someplace before? I wouldn't drive you, Larsa. It depends on where you've been. I've been to a great many places. Including Ireland. Indeed, sir. Where'd you come from? The Acme Employment Agency, sir. Before that? The last place, sir. Where was that? Oh, there were no complaints, sir. No complaints at all. I take great pride in my work and joy in my service. work for one of your friends or something. You know, these servants get around. Yes, I guess it must be. I'm going to have that drink. Good. I bought your favorite brand of scotch here. Yeah. Well, I'll we'll find it for it. you. It's right down here. Oh, you think of everything, don't you? Mm -hmm. Bourbon, too? Bourbon, too. Two cases in the kitchen. What else? This. Yes. Mix us a drink. Drink. Yes, sir. Right away. I'm going. There's too much traffic in here. It is a little crowded. See you home? No, don't bother. I'll take a cab. I'm sorry about that man of mine. Oh, everyone's having servant problems these days. Take me to lunch tomorrow. Stop by your office tomorrow. Fine. Good night. You can throw that one away now. Yes, sir. Throw it away, sir. Couldn't you treat it yourself, sir? That is a great pity. One should not waste good food, one should not. 
It's only one drink. Still, it'll save a man from freezing to death or dying from fatigue. It could. All right, all right. Drink it yourself. <laughs> if you insist, sir. With good health, sir. Sit down. Yes, sir. Sit down, sir. The agency sent you, hmm? Yes, sir. What can you do? Oh, anything you have a mind for me to do, sir. I can cook, clean, take care of my clothes, anything at all at all. What would one call you? Well, you might call me Horace. I've always had a fancy to be called Horace. Horace. Is that your name? We'll call you Horace. Thank you, sir. What about your salary? Oh, that's all been taken care of, sir. Oh, Mr. Auger's office. You made that too strong. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You'd have to be patient with me till I know your taste. And another thing. I don't like to be disturbed when I have visitors. Always knock on the door before you come in. Yes, sir. I'll keep it in mind. Well, I think that's all. You can finish your drink and then go to bed. Thank you, sir. That's a strong for you, hmm? I throw it away. From the Acme Employment Agency. I was told there's a position for a gentleman's gentleman. You're too late. The position's filled. I demand to see the master. And what would you be telling him? That you got the sack from your last place for getting into the port? Not to mention pinching the pallet made to the poor Gilbert's black and blue? Away with ye, Abadon, or you'll feel the back of my hand. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Horace. Who was that? Oh, oh, nobody at all at all. Just make yourself comfortable. I'll have your breakfast here before you can say Michael McGillicuddy. Oh, Horace, has the paper arrived? I'll get it for you, sir. What are we doing with all this milk? What milk, sir? The milk. I thought you might have a cat. Now, Horace. Oh, I'll take your paper, sir. Look here, Horace. Yeah, I'll go on with it. I'll answer that. Uh, sorry to disturb you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Wish you were milk delivered this morning. Yes? Two homogenized, one coffee cream and a pound of butter? Yes, I... Guess so. Why do you ask? Well, everybody else missed their deliveries. I don't get it. I left it on every doorstep as per schedule. Uh, thanks, Mr. Fitzgerald. Every day I left it on
Climate Agency. Uh, this is Mr. Fitzgerald, Stephen Fitzgerald speaking. Yes, I'd like to inquire about a manservant that you sent up here to me. That's right. What do you know about him? He came to us very highly recommended, Mr. Fitzgerald. Oh, yes, we've had him in several positions. Stealing? No, sir. You might consult his references. I could give you the names if you'd like. No, no, never mind. That won't be necessary. Thank you. You stole that milk, didn't you? Why would I be doing such a thing, though? I can think of one explanation. It would mean I'd be losing my mind. Have you ever seen this before? No, I'm a poor man, so... Answer yes or no. I've never seen it before in all my life, sir. Well, there's one thing certain. You can't stay here. You're too disturbing. I'll give you a month's salary, but you'll have to leave. Later, sir. Yes, right now. <laughs> Here, here, stop that. <laughs> I said stop it, Horace. I can't help it, sir. I just did. And I wanted so much to serve you. For heaven's sake, stop that crying. The best master I ever had in my life, and I'm ruining everything. I'm a failure. <laughs> all right, all right, I take it back. You can stay. Uh, Only stop that bawling. I know you didn't mean it, so you never regret your decision. I'll and the first thing you're going to do is to turn that milk back, you understand? Every bottle of it. Every bottle of it, sir. Hello? This is the Acme Employment Agency. Is this Mr. Fitzgerald? It is? You don't say. Well, I've changed my mind. You may consider the matter closed. traffic, Horace. I'm late as it is. Uh, thank you, train, sir. I have a very tight schedule today. I have lunch with Miss Auger at 1. I want you to pick me up at 2 sharp and drive me to campaign headquarters. After that, I have a press conference back at the office at 3 and then the women for Auger. Yeah. What women are they, sir? The women for Auger, a group of public-spirited citizens. Slighting the disposition of the machine, sir. Nothing more. You! What are you going to do, spend a weekend? Did you hear me blow the whistle? What do you think you're doing here? It's enough to admire the view, what is? None of your back talk or I'll run you in. If you think you're a ten more like it. Is that so? Come on, get that car out of here. What's your name? My name's my own affair. You do say so. You just said so. Hey, you have a sharp enough tongue to be a carry man. I tell you the truth, I'm from County Clare. County Clare is... But I'm relatives who live by the lakes of Killarney. You do indeed. I do indeed. You know, it's, it's just 30 years since I left the old country. Oh, you don't think. But perhaps I know some of your people. It, it's likely I do, you know. No, no, you and the simple lumber paper. Come on, Horace, do something. Do something. Get out, get out, Horace. Oh, I can't wait around any longer, Horace. I'm going to have to take a taxi. May I suggest that you take the subway, sir? What you lose in dignity, you'll gain in time saved. Oh, very well. Put this thing back together and pick me up at the restaurant at Two Sharp. Yes, sir. I hope you enjoy your lunch, sir. I 
I'll give you a little push to the curb. It won't be necessary, thank you, but... With the, with the rush hour, it's, it's, it's just terrible here because the car goes around a turn. It's all right, I... And, uh, uh, you know, pardon me, let, let me brush your hat. No, no, that's all right, I have it. I'm terribly sorry. It's all right. And such a beautiful hat, too. Thank you very much. It is really beautiful. Where are you staying and how long have you been here in New York? Now, I can't answer everything at once, Stephen. I, I've been here about a week. And you haven't I, called me. Oh, but I didn't know where you were. I'm stopping with Katie's Aunt Bridget's cousin, Mrs. Crimmins, up oh, the street a bit. That's just not true. Oh, it is. No, 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 you, you. I mean, you're being here in New York. Oh. Here, let me take those packages from you. Oh, this. thank you, Stephen. Oh. I hope there's nothing in there that'll break. How long are you going to be here? Oh, as, uh, as long as my business takes me. Take hold of my arm. I don't want to risk losing you again. <laughs> you think it was something unnatural and wonderful that I should be here. Well, it's wonderful whatever else it is. Oh, wait, wait. I, uh, I promised little dentist I'd bring him some candy. How much is this? Oh, 50 cents. Ah. Half a buck. Four beats. Well, I'm sorry. I couldn't change that. I just sent the boy out for some oh, change. Oh, dear. Steve, would you mind? Yes, hold on. This morning I had man must have let me go out without my wallet this morning. This is all I had. You couldn't change a doubloon, could you? What? Oh, no. Not your lucky piece, Stephen. I, I wait for my check. I was thinking of having my lunch. You know, uh, Mrs. Crimmins' cousin's son-in-law, Cornelius, has a bit of a bar and grill on the corner. You wouldn't care to join me, would you, Stephen? Oh, I'd like to, Nora. Except that I have a very important luncheon engagement, and after that, three or four conferences, you know how it is, the usual thing. Sure, sure you have. I, I, I'm impressed you, though. I hate to eat alone. Yeah, I wish I could, Nora. Thank you. You wouldn't refuse me out of pride, would you see? Pride? I don't want to miss... Get out, Maldito! Ah, no, she's still fine, no more. All you want to go up for the service is tied around the jazz, sorry. Thank you, Jim, so I'm going to have to go. Hey, you are, lady. Thank you. Forgive me for speaking of your affairs. I could cut my tongue out for it. You mind if I change my mind and accept your invitation? Would you, Steve? I was never a man to argue with miracles. Good, Al. 
Excellent. Thank you. Oh, no more for me, thank you. Oh, no. now, Stephen, you had hardly any at all. Because we weren't so an Irish Jew, sir. And that light, it wouldn't distress a canary. Well, just, just a very little bit. A little bit. You'll have some beer with it. No more beer, thank you. Just a small one. And yourself, Miss Nora? Oh, no, no. My tea be plenty. I, I expect you many people. Well, if all come that my old lady has invited, the place will be running over into the avenue itself. <laughs> Cornelius' daughter's getting married Friday. The celebration well, is to be here. Thank you, sir. If you care to attend yourself, sir, I'd like I'd to, be but very my happy. time's pretty well taken up right now. Well, if you change your mind, you're entirely welcome. The more, the merrier. Thank you. Ah, Cornelius, I'll take the check. Eat. <sighs> oh, yes. Mm. Now, you still haven't told me why you're here. Oh, well, it's, it's very simple. Uh, Teddy's Uncle Peter died here in New York and left him a bit of money. Hmm. That's Mr. Kremen, hmm? No, no, he's Driscoll Uncle from Galway. The one that married the youngest Brady girl while his father had the farm next to Sweeney's. Oh, that one. As you see, Mr. Driscoll had four sisters. And the eldest was married to Francis Corrigan that had a public house in Limerick with his brother Seamus. Well, that failed for drinking with the customers, so my father took Teddy on as a lad to help with the horses. And then he came to America. Corrigan. No. No, Uncle Driscoll is, I'm telling you. You see, his favorite sister was Kathleen. That's Teddy's mother. And uh, when young Paddy went to sea in 1920, uh, he changed his will, leaving everything to Teddy. He never cared much for Rory or that little witch of Ryan girl he married. Uh, there was some trouble with the O'Shea's, of course. Mm, of course. Uh, they thinking that their mother being the eldest was entitled to a share. But uh, Martin O'Shea had done well in marriage with the O'Doolies from up uh, Knocknashiga. And it was only a bit of an inheritance, a few shillings a month. So there was no trouble to persuade them not to make any complications. That made everything very simple. Oh, well, it would have been. But for Uncle Driscoll being a bit hazy in his notions and thinking that Teddy was a girl. So he left his money to his beloved niece. Can you imagine? I uh, can't think what confused him. Well, anyway, someone had to come to straighten things out. And Teddy wouldn't budge. He mistrusted the sea and refused flat out to set foot on the Atlantic. He said, I'd rather die a poor man with a dry one. So that's why I'm here. I'm, uh, I'm very glad you made it plain to me. And I'm very glad you're here. Oh, Stephen, I never thought I'd see you. When I knew I was coming, I, I wrote that nice Mr. Clark in London for your address. But he didn't answer. He's probably on the continent. He did tell me one thing, though, before he left, that... Any time, whatever might happen, he'd be glad to have you back with him. Did he say that? If it's a question of passage money, I'm, I'm sure he'd advance it. Oh, a bit more than nice, too. Oh, no, no, really, I couldn't. Oh, but I... you had very little before. But I... Oh, come on, now. A drop of this will do you good. Make you strong as a horse. All right, Cornelius, do your duty. And another potato. Another potato. Mr. Hogg, a personal question. As a former newspaper man, how does it feel to be against the wall instead of on the firing squad? Well, it feels awful. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you fellows will give me a break. Uh, do you think there'll be another war? I answered that a few minutes ago. No, you didn't. But then uh, nobody else has either. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hogg, I understand you support the Crawford proposal for Germany. Absolutely. That's a must as far as I'm concerned. I'd like to read your comment on this proposal. Quote, the Crawford proposal is a fraud on the German people, a death sentence for European democracy and a betrayal of American interests and ideals. Unquote. This appeared in the American Spectator on June the 6th under the byline of Stephen Fitzgerald. The same Stephen Fitzgerald who's running your brain trust today. Would you like to comment or perhaps Mr. Fitzgerald would like to discuss it? Well, boys, you know, <laughs> the only answer to that is very simple. When Fitz wrote that, he was working for someone else. Now he's working for me. <laughs> oh, Mr. Rock, let me work. change my shirt, will you? I haven't sweat this much since my first job carrying a heart. <laughs> you got any pictures of yourself carrying a heart? Uh, sorry, I didn't know I was going into politics then. <laughs> so long, Fitz. Uh, see you, Fitz. Bye. Let's see you, Fitz. Why don't you drop around the club sometime? Well, they keep me pretty busy. Yeah, we all have to make a living. Give me a ring. Hmm? Right. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, Mr. Hogan. Not at all. Say, you handled that perfectly, D.C. You know, I was afraid for a minute that... You want anything else, Mr. Hogan? No, thank you. 
Should have told me about that piece, Fitz. You read it, didn't you? Yeah, I read it, but I didn't remember it was so strong. It would be embarrassing if the opposition made an issue of it. But you knew those were my views when you hired me. Well, this is politics, Fitz. Where'd you put that bottle? Here, let me do it, D.C. This is politics. Got to keep one jump ahead of them. Right away, D.C. Not you. I've got it. You'll do a piece for New Era. We don't go to Pressel tomorrow night. On foreign policy, second thought since you had a chance to study the situation. You know one of those, on the other hand, the Crawford proposal's not as bad as you first thought it was. It's a pretty good thing in the long run. My agreement with you calls for perjury, but not under my own byline. Fitz. Have that thing on my desk by tomorrow noon. Here you are, D.C. Go out this morning without well, the clean handkerchiefs off. I hope you forgive me. I was thinking about it all the time I was dusting. I said to myself, there's poor Mr. Fitzgerald writing all those important political speeches and him without a handkerchief to put to his nose. It's very good of you, Horace. And now, if you don't mind, I have some work to do. Yes, sir. And after this, if you forget anything, you don't need to come chasing after me. There's such a thing as taking one's job too seriously. Oh, no, sir. Not when your heart's in your work. It's just a job, Horace. Oh, sir. He's more than that. He's a life indeed. When a man enters the personal services of another man, he must be prepared to surrender himself to his vocation. It is the master of matters, not the man. And soon, if the man takes to his work, the master's wish will become his wish. The master's thought, his thought. The master's soul, his soul. When the master gets hurt, the man will cry out. When the master's nose itches, He'll be the man who sneezes. He will live for his master, not for himself. Perhaps you find it difficult to understand, sir, because you, you are the type that wears no man's collar. You are a proud free man. It is for that reason that I'm proud to serve you. Will that be all, sir? Yes. Yes, Horace, that'll be all. Thank you, sir. Fitzgerald. Where's Mr. Auger? He's gone out, sir. When will he be back? I don't expect him back this afternoon. Where can I reach him? I don't know, Mr. Fitzgerald. But if it's important, I know he'll be home for dinner tonight. He's expecting some guests. Have some more steaks, Senator. No, thanks, D.C. I lost my appetite 20 years ago. <laughs> You'll find out. I already have. I'll pay for this in the morning. What is it, Jenkins? There's a Mr. Fitzgerald to see you, sir. He says it's important. Ask him to come in. Yes, sir. Come on in, Fitz. Come in. So good to see you. I believe you know everyone here, don't yes. you? Yes, Mr. I'm sorry that you'd be finished in oh, about quite all right. Senator Ransom, this is Mr. Fitzgerald, my good right hand. Ah, oh, yes, I've heard of this young man. Senator? Have some dinner, Fitz. No, thank you. I'd like to see you alone, if you don't mind. Oh, well, sit down. We'll be through. I'd rather wait in the study, if it's all right with you. Well, sure. Make yourself a drink while you're waiting. Thank you. Excuse me. Oh, I'll help him. Will you excuse me? Come on, How much do you want for Mr. Fitzgerald, D.C.? He's not for sale. Really? I understood he was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear father's been here as usual, sweet tackle self again. Never mind the drink, Francis. I'm not in the mood. Oh, now, really, Fitz, I thought... Uh, 
instrumental in getting me this job. Perhaps you'd like to be the first to read my resignation. I hope you know what you're resigning from. I think your father made that quite clear this afternoon. I guess I shouldn't tell you this because it's still supposed to be a secret. But I happen to know what he has in mind for you. Well, he hasn't let me in on the secret yet. If he wins the election, he's going to have to find someone to run the publishing house. Naturally, he'd prefer to promote somebody in his own organization. Somebody who understands the auger way of doing things. Go on. Of course, it would have to be somebody he can trust. Or manage. What about Higginbottom? Oh, no, Fitz, this isn't a job for a yes man. It's for a man who has the intelligence to recognize his big chance. Patience to wait for it and the resolution to seize it. Father's a bit of a fool to go into politics. He has more power right now than a dozen senators. The man who sits in his office will inherit that power. Not if he's still running things by remote control. He won't be. I'll see to that. You? How? Leave that to me. D.C. Auger will be perfectly happy making speeches in Washington, while Stephen Fitzgerald makes history here in New York. Well, it's a very alluring prospect. Of course you'd use the power for good, Fitz, but the important thing is to have it. It's all very well to have ideals, but what good are they if you can't reach the people with them? Yes, but I'm not sure that's what I want. It's what I want. But you have it now. No, I haven't. I can wheedle certain things, but I'm not a partner. You go with the job? If you want me, Fitz. Some cigars here. Oh, excuse me. Oh, here they are, Senator. You needn't wait it up for me, Horace. I thought you might require something, sir. I'd like a drink. Yes, sir, right away. Fix one for yourself, too. Yes, thank you very much, sir. I'd like you to drink my health, Horace. I'm going to be married. Ah, uh, indeed, sir. Would it be the tall lady, sir? Hmm? Oh, Miss Auger, yes. Ah, <laughs> you're the fortunate man. You make a fine mother for your children. And there's more to marriage than just having children, you know, Horace. Oh, indeed there is, sir. In riches and poverty, sickness and health, love, honoring and obeying. She'll make you a fine wife, sir. It's a very important decision, probably the most important that a man makes in his life. Oh, indeed it is, sir. May I ask what prompted you to make it? Well, one doesn't stop to analyze one's behavior when one's in love. No, sir, but there, there must be something about the tall lady that made you select her as your partner for life. Well, she's beautiful for one thing. She is indeed, sir. With a man's courage and a man's brains. Yeah. Is there anything wrong with a woman's courage and a woman's brains? We won't discuss it any further. No, sir. You have something against her, haven't you? Me, sir? No, sir. Nothing at all, at all. No one's forcing you to stay here and keep on working for me, you know. No, sir. After the wedding, I'll be looking for another place. Well, you don't have to make up your mind right now, Horace. You'll have no further need for me after that, sir. Will that be all, sir? Yes, that'll be all. Good night, Horace. Good night, you say, sir. Yes, forgive me, sir. I forgot to tell you that I'd waxed the floor. Yes, Horace. It was very thoughtful of you, Horace. This is good, Fitz. It's great. I think I like this ad lib finish. I think it's just perfect for the journalist club. It's all of one newspaper man to another. How would it be if I put my hands in my pockets? You know, sort of informal, homespun. 
Now, I wouldn't get too homespun. You're liable to unravel. Yeah, we mustn't overdo it. But this speech can be one of the most important in the campaign if we don't make any mistakes. You're certainly right there, D.C. Of course I'm right. Don't you have anything to do this afternoon? No, no, I'm all finished for the day. Finished for the day. Well, this is our chance to recapture the working press space. Well, if you don't have any further suggestions or criticism, I'll see if I can get that deathless document mimeographed. Oh, by the way, I've arranged you to sit at the speaker's table tonight. I wasn't planning to attend. I'll change your plans. My agreement with you doesn't cover the way I spend my evenings. In this case, it does. Take it easy, Fitz. If these were normal conditions, I wouldn't insist, but you're a member of this journalist club. What will your friends say if you don't show up? Assuming that I have any friends left. I, you're oversensitive. There aren't 50 newspaper men in this town who entirely agree with their paper's policy. Our relationship's a little different, isn't it? Well, sure, but this is politics, Fitz. Politics makes strange... strange bedfellows, I know, I know. I haven't been sleeping very well lately. Well, if I'm not complaining, why should you? Consider what Lincoln had to put up with. Here, have some of this. Thank you. There's a gentleman to see you, sir. Well, Bill, you old Hello, son of a gun. Fitz. How are you? Gosh, it's Fine. good to see you. What brought you? What? Sit down, sit down. <laughs> Can I fix you a drink? No, no, it's a little early in the day. How about a cigarette? You, huh? uh, oh, I keep forgetting. You gave them up. <laughs> well, tell me, what brought you to New York? The Spectator is calling in all its foreign bureau chiefs, you know, consultation. You live here, Fitz? Yeah. I see. Oh, I, I'm not responsible for the decoration. A friend of mine did those. But I'll be giving the place up soon, anyhow. Sure, sure, I understand, Fitz. Pretty expensive keeping a man, eh? Huh? Oh, I don't pay him. Oh? No, no, Auger. Auger does it. Auger. Yeah. You're still working for Auger? Well, of course. Look, fella, you don't have to put it on with me. Hey, what did you do? Tell him where to head in? Sure, then he passed the word around, I know. You've been drinking or something? Fitz, I have returned plane reservations for Monday. I've got some for you, too. You're going to Italy for us. Bill, I... Why, it's a break for me. Whatever happened. Nora's Cable arrived just as I was leaving for the airport in London. Nora's Cable? Did... Sure. She's a girl in a million. What did she say? I got it right here. I wired Bronson and got his okay to sign you. Oh, All I had no idea. No idea she'd do anything like this. Like what? Well, she got it into her head that I was broke. I should have told her the truth. The truth? Yes, I'm still working for Auger, Bill. You... Yeah, of course. I should have known it was too good to be true. Don't explain that to Nora. Oh, I should have done it before this, but you know, I've been busy. Well, you'd better make it good. I'll be on my way. Let's get together before you go back, Bill. Well, I'll see you tonight. I'm going to hear your boss. Oh, don't waste your time. Why not? I hear he makes a good speech. Yeah, that's yours. Oh, where can I reach you, Bill? The uh, Nelson. So long, Fitz. Bye. Right. Excuse me, sir. The tall lady called, sir. She wants you to take her to the Jennison reception. She said she'd call back again, sir. The tall lady, sir. Oh, yes, yes. Well, you talk to her, Horace. Tell her I'm tied up or something. Make it sound good. Yes, sir. Clark came to see me. He's here? Uh, Yes, Bill's here. He came to see me in my apartment, and he offered me a job. Oh, I'm so glad. 
When are you be coming back? Well, listen, Nora, What's I... the matter with you? This is oh. the second time. Why don't you... This is Terence Flaherty of Hook and Adder Company 38, the pride of the New York Fire Department. Oh, Mr. Flaherty, how do you do? How do you do? What's the matter? You smell smoke? Smoke? Yes. Back room, perhaps, hmm? Back room? Yes. Definitely smell smoke from some place. Might very well be back there. I'd have a look if I were you. Oh. Come on, let's try it over here again. Now, look, uh, tell me, tell me about that job of Bill. Just what did you say to him in your cable? Oh, he got yes, it then. Yes, he got it then. You'll forgive me for that. I had no right to interfere in your affairs. But, Stephen, it, it wrung my heart to see you like that. I hope I haven't offended you. Oh, you couldn't offend me if you tried. Welcome to the party, sir. Uh, well, I'm certainly glad you were able to make it. Here, drape that over your tonsils. <laughs> Nora, I, I have a confession to make. I have a job. You have? A very good job. I'm well on the way to being a very rich man. You lied to me. No, I didn't lie to you. You did so. That it was the truth? All that about the motor cars and, and drivers and important appointments? Yes. But it was the truth. How could I be lying to you? Oh, now, don't try to wriggle out of it. Just go tell Terence Flaherty that I'm not busy. You're not angry, are you, Nora? Of course I'm not angry. You made a fool out of in broad daylight. Well, I tried to tell you that... It did not. There's no smoke out there. Well, you better try upstairs. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh Stephen Fitzgerald. You're a wicked and deceitful man. And me filling you up with Irish stew. Well, it was wonderful stew. It was not. She put too much flour in the grave. But I'm glad you got what you wanted from life. Straight with my love to the pure crystal fountain that stands in the beautiful veil of a trolley. She was lovely and fair as the rose of the back home soon. Oh, uh, I have my passage on the steamer tomorrow. But you've only been here a week. But my, my business is done with. There's no reason to stay. But you know, there's, there's so many things that I, I wanted to talk to you about. That made me Do you still smell smoke, Mr. Fitzgerald? My Terrence Flaherty. Certainly, uh, don't you? <laughs>
it was all my fault. Oh, Stephen, praise be your life. Oh, darling. Oh, nice, nice friends you have. Oh, don't be sad. child. God keeps step with you. I live here, Stephen. Goodbye, Nora. Goodbye. Why, I was hoping to see me off on the steamer tomorrow. Going to the country for the weekend with my fiance. I'm being married in a month. I wish you happiness, Stephen. this to me. It's a bit of an old pebble, sir. A half an hour ago, that was a coin. From your pot of gold. <laughs> what sort of wire talk is that? I know very well what sort of talk that is. Hey, yeah, ask what's on your mind, sir. The truth, Horace. I want the truth. Keep your distance, Mr. Where were you? Where were you? Where were I'll be happy to give you any information you require. You are the leprechaun, aren't you? And, and I'm crazy. I've been crazy ever since that first night in Ireland. Answer your questions in turn. I am. But you see, I am. Now, the term perhaps is not quite the best usage. As to your mental condition, it's through you a bit on the weak minded side, which you're as sane as you'll ever be. Aren't you uh, a little large for a leprechaun? That's a page of my family history we won't go into if you don't mind. 
in the patch from all the exercise you've given me. You mind if I have a drink? Do you mind? So? You brought Nora over here, didn't you? No. You brought her here yourself, Fitzgerald. Long ago. In your mind. A physical present alters nothing. What are you trying to do? Ruin my life? Let's just discuss the matter calmly, Fitzgerald. Do you mind? You must believe me when I tell you that I was prompted by the noblest of motives. Simple gratitude and affection for yourself. It was for that reason that I left me at waterfall to come here and dwell in your... in your cold, inhospitable city. And I don't mind telling you, I'm a little bit homesick. My nose itches for the smell of peat and my eyes watered for the sight of a black thorn and bloom. It is sad indeed that I've been unable to complete my mission. That I must leave you in failure. I didn't ask you to come. To be sure you didn't. But then, you don't always wait for an invitation to follow the brave music of a distant drum. You see, I had learned to like you. Say, I suppose, it be philosophical. There would be other centuries to come. <laughs> and other young men with a nose for treasure. I offered you gold. It is not my fault that you prefer a pebble. to give you as sincerely as I can my view of the issues of the campaign. Not that I expect you all to agree with me. Frankly, I'd be a little worried if you did. As long as a good, healthy disagreement is the essence of a free press. But I hope you won't be too hard on me. Remember, I used to be an honest newspaperman myself. <laughs> Off the record, I wish I still were. <laughs> But I'd like to make a little announcement. If I'm lucky enough to win the election, I intend to resign from Augur Publications. I've given a good deal of thought to the selection of the man who'll take my place. Well, I didn't have to look far. For the past couple of months, I've been honored to work with one of the best newspaper men of our time. You all know him as a first-rate reporter and a whale of a good fellow. Steve Fitzgerald.
Go on, say something, bitch. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very grateful to Mr. Auger for his, his very flattering offer. But I can't accept. In the first place, I wasn't cut out for the job. And in the second place, Mr. Auger should have someone in charge of his publications who agrees with him on the issues. Is this on the record, Fitz? Can we quote you? Well, I... What are your own plans, Fitz? I... I haven't any. I haven't any except to sit under a waterfall with an old friend of mine. <laughs> I've said enough. You heard it all. Was there any chance you'll change your mind? No, I'm resigning as of right now, for good. Well, what about the engagement, Fitz? Is it on or off? I'm afraid that's up to Miss Auger. How about that, Miss Auger? Are you going to share that waterfall? I don't think I'm invited. But even if I am, as Mr. Fitzgerald would say, I'm afraid I wasn't cut out for the job. Goodbye, Fitz. Goodbye, Francis. Written fits. But I don't agree with a word of it. What's wrong with it? Well, anyone who, who knows a thing about conditions in Italy. Listen, I was there, were you? Oh, I should have gone myself. I know. All right, all right. If you don't like it, I'll turn it over to D.C. Auger. Now that he's safely back in the publishing business. <laughs> who said I didn't like it? Yeah, we'll run it as a series. The usual rates. Are you two going to sit here all night arguing? Oh, it's this pig headed husband of yours, Nora. He has no respect for my gray hairs. Listen, he, he's getting an auger complex. <laughs> Don't you want a nightcap, Bill? No, thanks. I'm going to bed. Right. Good night, Teddy. Good night, Mr. Fisher. Come on, honey. Teddy, would you just leave that bottle on the table there? I had no intention of touching it, I can assure you. <clears throat> Good night, Bill. Good night, Bill. Good night. You wanted anything to sing out. Thanks. I want a wife like Nora. There aren't any. It gets altogether unmanageable. I'll remember that. Bill! Oh. Something to keep out the cold, you know? <laughs> 